My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math questions out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find at the bottom of page number. 234. Page 234, today is our lesson number 117. At the very bottom of it, at the very bottom of it, they talk about calculating the distance between the two points. Q is negative 2, negative 3. Q, let's make a point here. Q is negative 2, negative 3. And this is this is this this question does not have a number. It is as I said, it is at the very bottom of page 234. And R, we are told, is 4 and 1.5. R is 4 and 1.5. They have to be cute, so that they're going to be cute, 1.5. Fine, fine, that's okay. And we are asked to figure out the distance between these two points. What we need here, the concept that we need to employ here, is what is known as a distance formula. Now, for those of you who have been watching my video on a regular basis, if you, if, if you recall, if, if you... If you go to this video here, it's just type in, just type in geometry for GRE, geometry for GRE, day nine. Just type in that tag, geometry for GRE, day nine. And on that day, I covered this topic of distance formula in in, in detail. So I'm not going to go over uh, today in too much detail. If you if you if you're shaky on it, if you need to learn more about it, if you want to understand it better, just watch this video, geometry for GRE, day nine, distance formula. What is a distance formula? A distance formula, oh by the way, the points that I have here are the points that I was going to do arbitrarily A and B are different from what you have here. Negative 2, negative 3, and then I have 4 and let's make it 1.5. Let's make it 1.5. Now the fact that they're calling it Q and R and I'm calling it A and B is immaterial. It doesn't matter what you call the points whether they are called A and B or P and Q or X and Y, the distance between the two points is the distance between the two points. That's not going to change just because uh, you christen them something else. So anyway, what are they talking about? So a distance formula is what you have to apply here. A distance formula is nothing, right here it says here, distance formula is nothing but uh, an application of Pythagorean theorem. It is Pythagorean theorem incognito, nothing more than that. It is Pythagorean theorem in disguise. If you do not know the word incognito, and if you are interested in improving your vocabulary also, just type in my name, Keshwani, and then vocabulary, day 42, and you will learn this word incognito, which means in disguise. And you will learn along with it some other uh, good words uh, that, will, uh, that will help you improve your score in the English portion of the GRE. Anyway, let's see what we do, what we do here. So we're going to draw two points here in the Cartesian coordinates and see what, what it boils down to. Let's say my two points are here. This is first point. Let's call it point A. And the coordinates are x1, y1. And here is our point B. x2, y2. The question is, how do we figure out the distance between these two points? Now, as we already mentioned, it is simple application of Pythagorean theorem. And the Pythagorean theorem comes from, comes from this part here. What you do is, you draw, you drop a perpendicular here to the base. And since this is a perpendicular, it gives you a 90-degree angle. And basically what you have here is a 90-degree is a angle, a 90-degree 90, 90 triangle. A, B, let's call it C. What's the distance from A to C? Distance from A to C, from A to C here, A has a co x coordinate of x1. Listen carefully. A has an x coordinate of x1. What is the x coordinate of point C? x coordinate of point C is the same as the x coordinate of point B because they are on a straight line. So the x coordinate of point C is x2. So the distance from A to C is this distance right here, A to C, this distance here, is simply x2 minus x1. Voila! That's your distance, A to C. x2 minus x1. What's the distance from B to C? Distance 
from B to C or C to B, doesn't matter, distance is distance, distance from B to C or C to C to C to B is simply what is the y coordinate of this point? The y coordinate of C, the y coordinate of point C is the same as the y coordinate of point A because this distance here that I'm showing you here is the same distance as that one, even though it doesn't look like it because that's because I didn't draw didn't do a very good job of drawing a straight line. There you go. This is your x-axis. This is your y-axis. So this distance from x-axis to A is the exact same distance as this distance from x-axis to point C. And since the y-coordinate of point A, point A is y1, the y-coordinate of point C is also going to be y1. So one more time, point C has the coordinates of x2, which is the same co x-coordinate as B, and y1, which is the y-coordinate of point C, is the same as the y-coordinate of point E, because it is it is the same height as point E, and it is at the same distance from the origin as point B is from the origin. That's all. So what's the distance from B to C? B, distance, distance from B to C is simply y2 minus y1. y2 minus y1. And this is the distance we are interested in calculating. Let's call it D, the distance from A to B. Now all you have to do is apply a simple Pythagorean theorem, which tells us that the square of the hypotenuse the square of the hypotenuse, the square of the hypotenuse, which is our this distance here, a to c, a, a, rather a to b, this is our hypotenuse, this, which we are calling distance d, equals the square of this distance and the square of that distance, which is y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1. That's it. That's is it. This is a distance formula. That's it. That is so-called the distance formula. But as you can clearly see, the so-called distance formula is simple Pythagorean application of Pythagorean theorem. We have done this thing many times. People go around saying c squared equals a squared plus b squared, or, or they will tell you that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Well, that's Pythagorean theorem, which simply says that the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. Square of the hypotenuse, this is our hypotenuse because it's facing 90 degrees, the square of the hypotenuse equals the sum of the square, square of this quantity and the square of that quantity, sum of the squares of the two quantities. This is the square. That's it. That's all we're going to do here. We're going to apply this Pythagorean theorem here, the so-called distance formula, and we're going to figure out the answer. I need the room, so I'm going to erase this uh, in between part here. Let's erase this part here. So our point A is this, our point B is this. Let's find out the distance. The distance, which is d squared, equals. Now, does it matter which one you call x2 and which one you call x1? The answer is it doesn't matter. Why doesn't it matter? I'll tell you why. We'll, we'll see in a second why. Because you see, if we if we do negative two, if we treat negative 2 is our x2, negative 2 is our x2, then it's x2 minus x1 squared plus, again, if you're going to call this x2, if you're going to treat, if you're going to treat point A as our point of origin, uh, as, as our beginning point, initial point, and going to B, so here we're measuring the distance from A to B. This is the distance from A to B. So a to b from a negative two to negative negative two to four, so it's x x one minus x two plus y one, which is our negative three minus y one squared, which of course boils down to which of course boils down to negative six squared plus negative 4.5 squared. Now what would have happened if instead of calling this one x2, the negative 2, we're calling this x1 rather, x1 minus x2, what would have happened if we had gone the other way around? Instead of going from A to B, what would have happened if we had gone from B to E, in which case 4 would be our x1 and 1.5 would be our y1 and this would be our y2. What would happen? Would it matter? Answer of course is no, it wouldn't matter because we are squaring the quantity. Here's what's going to happen. Okay, let's, I, I, I need the room, so let's Okay. Distance from B to A, again is D squared, 
would simply have been negative 4 minus negative 2 squared plus, let's put the demarcation here so we can keep the two separate, plus negative 1.5 minus the 3. Ah, you see? Okay, I have to slow down. x2, which is 4, which is a positive 1, minus, ah, I went too fast, minus, I'm trying to save room and I'm trying to do it in a, let's do it again, b to a, but d squared, our x2, which is 4, 4, minus x1, which is our negative 2, 4, minus the negative 2, 4, minus the negative 2, and this quantity is going to be squared, plus y2, which is 1.5, minus y2 which is negative 3 and again 4 minus a negative 2 is going to give us positive 6 squared plus 1.5 minus a negative 3 is going to give us positive 4.5 squared which is our distance from b to, b to f but as you can see positive 6 squared is the same as negative 6 squared and positive positive 4.5 squared is same as negative 4.5 squared because negative times negative is positive. So the bottom line is it doesn't matter which, which point you call it x1, y1 and which one point, point you call it y2 and y, x2 and y2 as long as you're consistent. What I mean by that as long as you're consistent. In other words if you're going to go negative 2 minus 4 then you can't go 1.5 minus a negative 3. You have to be consistent. If you're going this way for x you have to go this way for y. So whatever your starting point is and whatever your finish, finishing point is, they have to be consistent. Are you going from A to B or are you going from B to E? In this calculation, we went from B to A. B I treated as our initial point, A as I treated as our final point. So distance from B to A is this right here. Here we treated A as our initial point and B as our final point. And the answer, answer of course is the same. answer of course is going to be the same because the distance is not going to change whether you, whether you go from A to B or B to A. It's the same, obviously. That's all. But well, we haven't finished it, have we? We have to finish the bloody thing. Well, you can finish it yourself. That's it. Uh, the rest is easy. You just uh, finish it yourself and, and that's the answer. The rest of the stuff is in the book. I will see you tomorrow. And tomorrow, we'll start a new concept. So we did distance formula. I, this is the second time I'm covering this topic of distance formula in this much detail. As I told you before, if you want to watch the previous video, you might get something out of it which is simply geometry for GRE day 9. Starting tomorrow, we'll do the new concept, very important concept for the GRE, which is the concept of slope. And we're going to do, let's see how many do I have here, one or two maybe. Actually, there are quite a few problems that are dealing with the concept of slope. So we'll start, start, the, uh, start the topic tomorrow, okay? I'll see you then. Bye now.